All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, so today what we're doing is we are downloading um, Ubuntu, downloading VirtualBox, downloading the VirtualBox extension package, the add-ons, and we're going to actually wrap it all up and put it into something that you can use now. So uh, as I stated, my host operating system is Windows. I'm going to bring up my downloads folder. Hopefully you download things. You keep it simple and download things into your downloads folder. Sometimes people change that. That's on you. Uh, don't call me or ask me where you downloaded it to because I don't know. All right, I'm going to go to downloads. Now, I got three files here. I got the Ubuntu image, that ISO, that can of chili that we talked about, or that can of soup. Everything's packaged together, easy to use. Uh, we got the VirtualBox, the actual installer application for the Oracle VirtualBox, and then we got our additions here that are also called extension packs. So the first thing we got to do is we got to install VirtualBox. Now, this is my third time doing this because I use two different monitors and one monitor is in front of another one. So in the background, I was running VirtualBox. I didn't know it and it aired out. So I shut down my computer, shut everything off. Uh, if you have a lot of windows open, I do suggest that you close all the windows, maybe even reboot your computer and just start at this step. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click on VirtualBox. Most of you are probably old enough to remember the old Geico commercials. It's so easy, a caveman can do it. Uh, it's self-guided. And um, it, you just have to make sure that you get the right VirtualBox installer for your machine. So if you have Windows, you need the Windows installer. If you have a Mac, you need the Mac installer. And if you're running a Linux box, you need to have the Linux installer. So again, my home computer, my host computer is uh, Windows, Windows 10, actually Windows 11. And I'm going to hit install. And uh, it, it does all the work, all right? You might see a couple errors pop up along the way. There might be a message. You're just going to click through those. Uh, what it does do when it installs is it does piggyback on your existing uh, network adapter. So it may, ask you, it may ask you to confirm that. Since I already have it installed, it's probably going to skip that step. And it will take about anywhere from probably five, six, seven minutes. It, it, when, when it expands out, it's, it's a lot of stuff going on. So just be patient. All right, you're going to get to this step. I have the box checked for it to boot up and... Run VirtualBox. So there we go. And yours won't have all these here because I already had it installed. So I already have all these machines inside my virtual container. So there it is. This is what your GUI should look like. And it should look something like this. So that's pretty much setting that up. Now, the next step that we're going to do is you're going to go back to your downloads folder. Because we don't want to forget this step. All right, and we're going to go to downloads. And remember I had you download that um, additional file, the extension pack. Let's go ahead and double click on that now. And it's going to ask you if you want to upgrade. You're going to hit yes, upgrade. And I'm not going to go into the uh, expansion pack a lot here. The important thing to remember is that they make you read the EULA. And whenever you install software, you should probably read the EULA but I'd be lying if I told you that I read this every time I download it. Now, if I download an application I'm not familiar with, I'm going to read it, and it pretty much says that it's going to take everything from me that I want to do, and they're not responsible for anything. So, uh, But EULAs have to be in there, in user license agreements. We call them EULAs. All right, and once you click on it, it'll do its magic again. Again, this is going to make some things happen in the background. We're not really going to go into it too much in any of my courses, maybe my um, Linux scripting class. We might go into it a little bit, but there's really no need. I suggest that you uh, download some videos, watch some videos, and read up on the extension packs because they do add some extra, extra functionality. Uh, after I get done creating this initial blast of um, 2023 videos for VirtualBox, I will go back and I will, um, I will explain them a little bit more and have a whole thing just on uh, the extensions and what they do. All right, so we're going to create a new machine. So let's go up here and create our new machine. And I'm going to call it Create Ubuntu VB. And then down here, remember the ISO image? You got to go in and you got to select where that ISO image is. So for me, since I'm on Windows and since I have my computer set up correctly, again, where yours is, I don't know. All right, hopefully it's in your downloads. You're just going to click on that and you're going to click open. Um, do not, uh, let me see, let's go ahead here and skip unattended installation. This is a new feature. 
and that will make us go through and do everything manually. All right, so that's probably best. If you do this, what happens, if, if you don't select this, it will do an unattended installation, and it gets a little bit more complex because it creates your users for you, but I don't want you to do that. All right, we're going to click Next. Now, I mentioned it in one of the earlier videos that RAM is everything, and as you can see, I got 20 gigs on my laptop. Okay, so what will happen is if you only have two gigs assigned, maybe you only have four gigs on your computer, you only assign two gigs, VirtualBox is going to be very slow. There's no getting around, especially when you load an Ubuntu desktop. Server will probably work fine. Um, so I suggest you go in here and you bump that up to something. Uh, if you got eight gigs on your machine, try to bump it up to uh, 4096 megabytes. I'm going to bump it up a little bit more. And then I normally enable a second CPU. So we did that. And then when you get to the next prompt, after you hit next, it's going to create a virtual hard disk. Bump that up just a little bit. doesn't need to be a lot. Around 40 is pretty good, actually. But it's, and it's not rocket science, just something in the neighborhood. All right, so it's going to ask you to verify all this. And away we're going to go. So now I'm going to hit start on that machine, and that's just like hitting your power button. I've got everything in there. I've got my ISO image. That's my can of soup that's going to go in there. It's going to pull all the files it needs. It's, it's relatively automated. So here we go. Now, I am going to stop the video here because I have to edit this video, and um, it takes a while to publish these and do the whole high-def translation. So this will be a part one of a two-part video series.